everyone, Gina with Belly Beads Paper Jewelry here. Today, bringing you a tutorial on my Victorian lace bracelet. And this is something that I am very proud of because, let me take it off here to show you. It is really very elegant and very pretty. Now, everyone knows me for my paper beads. Um, so when I found the love of paper beads, I thought I'm going to try this technique that I've been doing this for years um, with trim. I've been making bracelets out of. So I want to incorporate my paper beads into my um, my lace trimming. And if you could see how pretty, they're all little dangles. And it's very pretty on the hand too as well. Okay, so let's get started. I want to show you some of the things that you're going to be needing. You can purchase any uh, fabric trim from your fabric store. You're gonna need some paper beads, any jewelry findings. You're gonna need your pinch crimp clamps. They're the end clamps. They come in various sizes as well. So you wanna make sure that you grab the right size. Um, your lobster claw clasp, some head pins, and some beads, and a chain, all right? And of course your tools to work with. Uh, your pliers and your um, your jump ring pliers. So let's get started. I want to show you first how to cut your trim. When you purchase this, it's really important that you understand what, once you cut it, it frays. And if you could see, I actually took the tape off. I usually tape them off, but I wanted to give you an idea. Don't start cutting it unless you tape it off. So let's do that right now. I'm going to Grab some tape. And they sometimes when you're at the fabric store, this is what they do too, so it won't fray. And just fold it over, just like that. Now, you once you've taped it, you wanna measure it on your arm. I need this much right here, okay. And now, I'm supposed to cut right here because this is my measurement to, uh, for my wrist. But I'm going to go a little bit above because I don't have tape on it. See how it frays? Then I'm going to grab my tape. And there's other ways, too. I'm sure that everyone knows how to cut the trimming on um, on trims, on, on fabric like this. I try to make it a little bit more narrow with the tape because I it, it, it will be covered up. So you just want to go ahead, hopefully the camera can grab that, make it as thin as possible, turn it over, just so it doesn't continue to fray. This will be actually um, covered up, so don't, don't worry about that. All right, so once you've done that, you have the right size, everything's taped off. You want to begin now on deciding on what type of colors and beads you want to um, incorporate with or hang from your bracelet. Now, I actually, I like to go with, some silvers and some grays because this is, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. It's more like a silverish um, gray color. So I've decided to place some of my beads, my paper beads, and they have gray and silver in it. Now, unless you want to go all out and just put all different colors on it, that would be fine too. Um, it's your bracelet, so decide on what works for you. I also like making my beads my paper beads out of charms it's a really nice touch now these are all finished too once um, i've completed them i then get my eye pin and i'm going to show you how to do this there is one here i want to show you this is my paper bead and that is actually just a regular uh, metal silver bead then i have one that has mm, it's like a little glass bead on it but there's a ton of things that you can do now the pins i'm using actually have another hook on it and i'll show you the pins and the head pins. These are the ones with the eye in it. Okay. And I'm going to grab a bead. I'm going to show you. And I just, I can either start with it with um, just pushing it through my, my bead, or I can add something like I did with this just to embellish the bead a little bit more. I'm going to go with a, an actual, a, a totally different color. I actually, <laughs> I wanted to go with this, my, um, very nice. My niece had donated some of her beads to me. They're really nice. And uh, she's a 
very big supporter of my um, my channel. So I like to give a nice sh shout out to Jennifer Bosco. And she's a great realtor too. She works with Keller Williams over here in South Jersey. So if you're deciding to buy a house, she's the one for you. All right, so enough of that. Let's get started here. Here I have um, one of the beads. I know it's a different color, but just for purposes of showing you. And then I would grab one of my um, pliers here and then just curl this under to make another loop. And that's how you make the charms. Simple like that. All right, now you can add anything. Um, let me try, I'm gonna show you something really neat too. This is one of my other eye pins here with the loop. I'm gonna try another one, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put place nothing on the end of that. And I'm just gonna loop it, make my loop. Now you can cut that out. You can cut it so it's a little shorter, but I'm just gonna curl it under like that. All right, now I can grab one of my jump rings. My, these, this is really, these are really big. I like big jump rings and, okay. Then I'm gonna grab my um, jump ring and hook it into the other one. And I should use my pliers to close them. I always tend to forget and I use my fingers, sorry about that, and closing them. There we go. Now this I can leave and hang another one from, or I could um, grab any kind of other bead and attach that with it, and I'll show you. Here are some other little unique things that you can find. Also, I want to mention, I've always purchased from um, my beads, mostly from Michael's, I do go to another store. I travel um, from some of my beads. And I buy a lot, though, uh, from Michael's because you can get some really good buys from it. All right, so here we go. Here's another little um, ornament that I have finding that I use. And then I'm just going to attach it to the other one. Grab the pliers. And hook that in there. Now you can see I've made a longer charm. Now, of course, you can use smaller jump rings. Just trying to give you some ideas here. And then from here, I would then grab another jump ring. And again, these are very big. So you want to use smaller ones if you want. I, I, ju I just love using the big, the big ones. And we're going to bend it, twist it. And once we've twisted it, we want to hook it into the other one. Now this is where the fun starts. Okay, we're going to place, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to twist so I can show you in the, in the, um, the camera here. Hopefully you can see it. All right, you're going to get the jump ring. There's some loops on some of the trimmings, but if there aren't, you can try to find wiggle your way into the fabric. That's very slippery today. Doesn't want to work with me. Come on. Okay, there we go. If you can see in the camera, there are some little loops in, in this fabric. So I'm going to try to connect connect it with. <laughs> All right, this is good. It's showing you these are the many mistakes that you can make. All right, I'm going to hook it right in there. There we go. Then I'm going to close it. It's not, I, do, I don't have the right um, pliers, of course. Sorry. Here we go. I'm going to grab that in there. And there we go. See, it's dangling. <laughs> it's really nice. And then you can make a whole row of them. Now, there's some other fabrics I want to show you. Um, and some other pins. This pin is really nice. This has a decorative uh, end to it, which is really nice. So I wanna show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna grab this one. This is one of my other paper beads. And I don't even need a bead, but look how pretty that is, right? And then with this one, of course, I can either add some more or I can go ahead and cut it. Let's 
Let's see if I can cover it. Oh, sorry. Let me grab my other copy. All right, there we go. And then just make a loop with that. Okay, and then there you go. Look how pretty that one is. And then, then you can uh, place a jump ring through this one. And then you can hang it, have that one hanging. And this is probably nicer that has a lot of grays in it. And see, there's some oranges. So you want to pick some colors to make sure that they complement your trimming. Now let's finish this off. Once you've um, achieved what you need for the, the entire row, you want to go ahead and grab your crimp ends. Now make sure that when you do purchase your crimp ends that it is the same size and length of your trimming. You don't want to buy anything small because then the ends will show. So you want to just go ahead, and I don't know if you saw that, just sl slide it right in there. And you, what I would like to do is sometimes what I, I usually do is I will grab some glue some fabric glue and just place a little bit in there just to secure it a little bit more okay and then once you you've completed that you want to go ahead and make sure everything is tucked in I'm doing this rather quickly which I shouldn't um, once everything like the tape is tucked in there the tape right there you want to go ahead and crimp them and crimp it now see the end here? There's a little tape in here. I'm just gonna kind of shove that in there. Now if I had glue, which I would highly suggest, grab the glue. And then the glue will help it stay in there a little bit better, okay? And it's freeing because I didn't grab the, um, the tape didn't grab onto it, if you notice. But then you would go ahead and crimp that one what I can do is I can just cut some of the trimming off of there and then glue a little bit more. But if you notice, that is exactly what it should look like. Again, we'll do it to the other side. This side would probably cooperate with me a little bit better because I got the tape on a little bit better. Grab a crimp end. Now remember, you don't want the um, tape to, to peek out from the crimp. So when you cut the tape, make sure it's nice and thin, a little bit smaller than this and then just slide in your crimp bead and be very careful because this uh, these trimmings are very delicate and they tend to fray they are sturdy once you've got them in place though just so you know then we're gonna just crimp this one now I'm gonna show you how what it looks like when you don't have let me see maybe I could do it you could just tuck that in there glue would be great <laughs> all right and then just crimp that and press and there you go now see how it's peeking out we want to make sure that when we apply that tape that the tape is really thin it's there's not a really big tape in it all right once you get that all set you're going to grab some chain and you're going to grab your jump rings And let's see. I'm going to open up our jump rings from side to side. Attach the jump ring onto the, the chain just like that. Then you're going to hook it into the crimp. And there's a little loop in that crimp. And just secure it. Close your crimp. And close your jump ring, I'm sorry. And then it's up to you at this point whether or not you want a long chain, you want it to be short, uh, secure. I like things that dangle a lot, so I always make my chains really, really long. Now the chain, you're going to have to, um, you know, take that apart as well. And usually you can grab one of the little hooks and just take them off like so. Oops. Okay. Then we want to grab another jump ring because we want it to, to match that. And here's another jump ring. Now this jump ring we're going to have attached the lobster claw. Okay. 
and the lobster claw looks like this. We're going to place that jump ring in as so, and then we're going to hook it onto the crimp. Oops, we're going to hook it onto the crimp. And then once we've done that, I want to close that up. And then there you go, you have your um, end pieces are all together. Now I like it long because once I've attached it, there's like that little dangling of the, um, the bracelet in the back. But that's what it should look like in the back. And again, be mindful when you are put placing these crimps. See, look at that. I, I, I would have to redo this, but I wanna show you the mistakes so you don't make them and don't become frustrated over it. But the tape should go over that as well. Make sure that you're very careful with it. I like making mistakes on here so everyone can see it because I know when I would make mistakes, I would think twice and think, oh, how did they, how do they, uh, you know, fix it? So that's what it would look like if you look and see the tape is showing. So we have to ensure that we squeeze the sides when we're placing that crimp, crimp, crimp end on. All right, so here's the other one. And here's the, um, the one dangling. And I want to show you some other fabrics that are really nice. And I also want to show you, get it, give you another little tip on um, getting some fine jewelry findings and beads. Very inexpensive. Because when you're starting out, it is very expensive to purchase in bulk. So I've always... I mean, for years, I have always went to the local craft store, Michael's, and when they have these on sale, these are, this string, um, beads on a string are actually $3.99, $4.99, and $5.99, and when they have a 70% uh, sale off, that it is really nice. Uh, this was $1.33 for these all, this, this entire strand. So what I usually do is I would just, you know, cut off what, you know, the beads that I need, cut the strand and use the beads. There's also beads. These are really nice. I mean, I can make about five bracelets out of this alone because I'm not using the entire strand. I'm just taking what I need. And also when you purchase from um, the craft stores, these um, beads on a strand, they have also little findings. And I usually take these apart and use them as well. Let's show, I'm going to show you some of the other fabrics the trimmings. This is another trimming. These are really pretty. You can do a lot with them. Also, there's this one. This one's really pretty. But make sure, be mindful of your ends. See how wide that end is? And this is a crimp. This one isn't wide enough. And they do make them wide enough for this. Um, and you can have so many colors. This is like a golden color. It's really pretty. I made another little bead, paper bead, and I just put a tassel to it. And that's what uh, one of the beads looked like. And I thought it was really pretty. And it has all those color coordinations in them. And you can hang that as well from it. Then we have some really nice, like, um, rusty colors with it. There's this one. You can also make a necklace out of it, uh, an anklet, and um, that is probably the one of the nicest fabric colors I have. There are rusty colors in it as well. All right, so there's a ton of different um, jewelry findings you can hang from it, and that's pretty much it. So if you like this channel, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And click on the bell so you are notified of any future videos that I am uh, putting out. So thank you and have fun.